What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. This video is the first of four that we'll be talking about wind uplifts and how they affect standing seam metal roofing. In today's video, we're gonna learn what wind uplifts are and how does wind work when it comes to roofing and construction. Today I have Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Absolutely, happy to be here. First question I have for you is, what types of forces does wind create on a roof? How does that work? Wind creates basically pressure on your roof, right? You have different types of pressures that your uh, roof's gonna have to go through. Pretty much at any point during the day, the roof is gonna be under some type of load, however minor it might be. If there's a breeze outside, it's creating pressures that your roof's gonna have to withstand. The problem comes into play is when you start getting into extreme forces and things like that, that can end up causing roof failures. You know, that's why one of the reasons we're doing the series and what we're going to talk about, you know, is how to properly account for those different types of wind pressures your roof can encounter and how to make sure that your roof is installed correctly to, you know, withstand them the best as possible. So a word that somebody might hear, you know, in reference to this topic is wind uplifts. What is that, you know, and how does it affect the roof? When I think of wind, you know, first thing I normally think about is like aerodynamics and, and a car, right? Car driving down the street, wind coming up, hitting it, and going over top of it all nice and smooth. That's not how it works really when you have a big square building, right? Um, you have a big wall, wind's going to hit that wall like a freight train, and then the wind's going to push up the wall at an accelerated speed. When it does that, the wind actually comes up, hits the wall, comes up the roof, and then at the corners and perimeters of the roof, as it comes up over the edge of the roof, it actually swirls and creates a vortex, right? And those vortex create negative pressures. Or the wind could come up, hit the side of the roof, come up over the roof, and as it's going over the lower side, you know, it creates a negative pressure. So there's different pressures that you have to deal with, positive and negative. But when it creates that negative pressure, it creates a pulling action. And that pulling action creates forces on your roof. That creates uplifts that your roof has to deal with. You know, the other pressure is the positive pressure. Positive pressure, you know, if you think of negative as pulling, you could think of positive as pushing, right? Pushing from underneath the roof. It could be wind getting underneath the panels themselves. It could be air getting into the building and creating a, a positive or pushing action on the underside of the roof deck. It can come in through windows. It can come in through uh, ventilation, you know, in your roof system, things like that. And those are the forces that you're going to have to uh, account for based on, you know, location, style of your roof, things like that. Yeah, let's get into the style of the roof a little bit more and talk about the different parts of the roof. In a future video, we'll talk about roof zones specifically. But can you just talk to me about how, you know, uh, wind affects different parts of a roof? Without getting too deep into it, the edges of your roof system are going to take, you know, all the brunt of the force, right? I mean, that's where the wind's going to come up. It's going to hit the wall. It's going to it's going to go up the wall, and it's going to hit the edges of your roof. So your perimeters are definitely going to have to be able to withstand more force. Obviously, corners where two perimeters meet, right? Those those experience double the pressure, right? Because you can have wind hitting it from both sides. Different parts of your roof are going to experience different forces based on the design of your roof, whether it's a hip roof, whether it's a gable roof. So you're going to have to account for those different forces that the style of your roof could encounter uh, based on the areas that you're in. Okay, I gotcha. And, you know, based on the location as well, you know, depending on some locations have, you know, higher wind speeds than others. Different locations are going to require different wind speeds. The height of your building is going to affect, you know, the different uh, winds that it can encounter. So there's a lot of things that go into play, you know, based on what your what your building actually looks like, right? You have, you know, uh, two identical buildings. You could have one in a hurricane zone, one not in a hurricane zone, and you're going to have two completely different requirements, you know, as far as how the, the roof should be attached. Another thing that we're going to need to know, um, that's kind of a prerequisite to this discussion, is how wind uplifts affect standing seam metal roofs specifically. Because when you look at a standing seam panel, you've got two ribs and then you have a flat part of the panel. And this can be 12, 16, 18 or more inches, you know, from panel, from rib to rib. So, 
Um, that's a lot of deflection that can occur. Jeff, talk to me a little bit about how wind uplifts can affect standing seam panels. The first thing, the pressure on the panel, you start getting deflection in the panel. So that's where the center of the panel is going to basically be pulled up. And if you looked in a our other testing videos, you know, you can see the panels in the test chamber, the flats of the panels are, you know, being raised up pretty significantly off the deck that they were tested on. You know, sometimes the deflection in the center of the panel go two, three times the height of the standing seam. You can get some serious amount of deflection and certain tests measure for deflection in panels. Why does that matter? Well, the more deflection you have in the panels, the more pressure that's being put on the seams. So when the panel deflects, the seams can take and open up. When the seams open up, it can cause a failure in the engagement of the seams, whether it be a snap lock or a mechanically seam system, right? So it can basically open up the seams more common on a snap lock panel than on a mechanically seam panel. But now you're also putting all that force on the clip as well, right? Because now that clip is having to hold those panels down. So clip failure is another uh, a mode of failure that's probably pretty common, you know, the the two main ones that, that we see in testing are panel separation and clip failure. It's important to know what your system's tested at, whether it's a 90 degree seam, 180 degree seam, knowing what your clip spacing is. Obviously, the more clips you have, the more you have holding it down, the less one clip has to do on its own. When it comes to deflection, wider panels are going to be able to deflect more than narrower panels, right? Because you have more area in between those seams that can have that pressure to get pulled on. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, when we see that panel bow up like that and the seams go the opposite way, you know, these being snapped together or even mechanically uh, seamed together, um, that's putting a lot of pressure on those ribs as well. And standing seams, you know, when you look at it, you know, when those seams get pushed together, sometimes it makes them engage more, right? The problem is, is when it gets to a certain point, you start losing the benefits of being, you know, the seams getting pushed tighter to where they're actually getting pulled apart. It's really determined by how much force is being applied to the roof, you know, that you're going to see before you see a failure. All right. I think that's a good place to stop in this video. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one. We've got a lot more videos about wind uplifts coming down the pipeline. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.